Hello, Mr. Foley here, and I'm going to do episode two on dividing bases of 10. If you've already watched multiplying bases of 10, uh, you should watch that first before this one. And we're going to talk about dividing. So we're going to kind of do it the same way. I have the same five uh, numbers on the left side, 12 and 34 hundredths. And we're going to do dividing by, and I just realized that I need to get rid of these because we're dividing. Uh, so while I do that, um, if you remember, we said uh, Mr. DL with multiplying, and that does cover dividing. Mr. for multiply right, and DL for divide left, and that was we said for whole numbers only, and for decimals that flip flops and gets uh, it goes backwards. So let's take a look at this starting in the middle, and we're going to divide by one. <clears throat> so I think if any time you multiply or divide a number by one you're going to end up with the same number. In other words, one will go into this number this many times. So this is again a good place to start and it's easy. So number doesn't change, decimal point doesn't change, everything is the same, very easy to divide by one. So now we're gonna look at dividing by 10. That is our next largest whole number base 10 number. And like I said before, if you were to take a number and, uh, you know, this time I'm going to use the, the 1 in the 10s place. It just might be a little bit easier. And you take 10, right? That 1 is 10. It's in the 10s place. So that 1 represents 10. And if I was to ask you what is 10 divided by 10, uh, you would say 1, right? So that information tells me that this 1 must end up in the 1s place because I know that 10 divided by 10 equals 1. One, So over here I must have a 1 in the uh, ones place. So let's see if we can do that. So we're going to have a 1 in the ones place. That's our first digit of 1, 2, 3, 4. And if it's in the ones place, the decimal point has to go here. And then all the other digits have to follow exactly in the order we see them uh, on the left in the factor over here. So that becomes 1 and uh, 234 thousandths. Uh, remember we said uh, Mr. DL, I'll write that down here, we'll look at that. Uh, divide left, talking about the decimal, we did move the decimal left in between the 1 and the 2. We moved it exactly one place, and again there's one zero in the number 10, so uh, that's how we do it. Notice when we multiplied by 10 our number got bigger, and now when we're dividing by 10 our number has gotten smaller, so uh, that should make sense to you, right, if you multiply a whole number uh, times or any number times 10 the number has to get bigger and then if you divide it by 10 it has to get smaller right because you're taking that number and breaking it into 10 parts so the parts have to get smaller um, and again now when we divide it by 10 our digits what did they do they move to the right right the two went from the ones place to the tenths place so let me kind of continue along here and we'll do a hundred and uh, let's see, I think I'm going to use the 2 on this one. And it doesn't really matter. You just kind of want to look at something that makes sense to you when you're doing this, right? There's no real reason. I'm just picking numbers that, to me, um, make sense. And so the reason I picked the 2 is because uh, if I'm dividing by 100, any time I can think of money, it's always very helpful. So if I think of 100, I think of uh, there are 100 pennies in a dollar, right? That's an easy thing to remember. And so if I had $2, how many pennies would I have? And I would have 200 pennies, right? So that, that tells me that the 2 divided by 100 would give me, um, would give me uh, 200 pennies, right? So if I have um, 200 pieces, whole number 2 divided into 100 parts would be um, 200, but it's not 100, it's hundredths, right? Two hundredths. In other words, taking a two, breaking it into a hundred parts, how many uh, pieces would you have? And you would have uh, 200 pieces, right? 200 pieces. So we are going to um, move the two into the hundreds place. I guess the other way to think about this, maybe that makes more sense, is if you're going to write um, two um pennies, right? So how many pennies would you have in $2? This is probably a better way of looking at it. Two, two, two you got $2 in pennies in front of you. And if you took one of those pennies, right, you break them into uh, two 100 pieces, um, how, how much would you have? You'd have two cents, right? You'd have two cents. Breaking 200 pennies into 100 parts, you'd have two, two pennies in each part, 
Maybe that's another way of saying it. I don't know that I said it the right way the first time, but I want to clear that up. So, so basically the two has to go into the hundredth place where pennies would be in the hundredth place, right? One penny would be in the hundredth place. So uh, we're going to put the decimal point and we're going to write the one, the two, the three, the four like this, 1,234 ten thousandths. And so the two is in the ten, uh, the hundredth place, and that is where we would show two cents, right? If we had a zero, two, it would be two cents. So divide left, we did move left. Our decimal point went from between the two and the um, three over between the one and the, I'm sorry, we had to go two places. I'm messing up here. Uh, okay, two zeros and 100. We had to move the decimal two places, so we moved it one, two, and it ended up right there on the left side of the one. So um, that is correct. Now, like with multiplying, when we multiply by bases of 10 larger than one, the number got bigger. Now we're dividing by whole number bases of 10 and larger than one, and the numbers are getting smaller. The product over here is getting smaller. So when we divide by decimal base 10, you should think, well, if it got smaller dividing by whole number bases of 10 larger than 1, what's going to happen when I divide by decimal bases of 10? Well, the number's going to get bigger. And again, we talked about changing things around a bit and calling this uh, Dr. ML, and that's going to tell us to go right. So if the decimal is going to go one place to the right, right? This is going to go, this is one place here, one place there. Um, if I said to take the whole number two, divide it into tenths, that's what this is, a tenth, right? You know there are 10 tenths in one whole, so there would be 20 tenths in two holes. So if there are 20, then this two has to go from the ones place and into the tens place. So let's write this down. This is going to be like this, uh, one, twenty, three, and four tenths. Remember, divide right. We went right between the two and the three to between the three and the four. The two is now in the tens place, so it's representing 20, and there would be 20 tenths in two holes. Okay, think about dimes. You can think about dimes as a tenth, uh, and if you had two dollars, you'd have uh, 20 dimes. All right, let's continue. We're going to do a hundredth. Same type of pattern here, and uh, we're going to move now the de the decimal is going to go to the right uh, two times because there are two places in this decimal base 10 number and it's going to go one and two and it's going to end up after the four so we'll write that one two three four now we notice we have a whole number again right so uh, uh, decimal point is optional I'm going to put it there so you can see it but if you don't see one you can always put it to the right of the number so you might notice and if you look back at the other video this is basically flip-flopped exactly from the multiply. When we multiplied times 100, 100, the whole number at the top, we, we had this number. When we multiplied by 10, again, at the second one down, we had this number. And then uh, when we, when we uh, multiplied by 1 tenth, we, did the same, we had the same answer as dividing by 10. And when we multiplied by 100th, we had, again, the same number. So everything is just kind of flipped around. But this is helpful. And the idea of you can do multiplying and dividing like this by memory, just using a simple number like 12 and 34 hundredths. You could jot this down on a paper before a test or during, you know, at the beginning of a test. And then you could use this as a reference to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. So that's the whole point of that. So uh, I'm going to try to get this video up here and hopefully you enjoy it and get something out of it. And uh, I do have feedback turned on my channel, but it's only with approval. And I did that so that... Uh, uh, you know, I don't have anyone typing bad things on there. So um, if you do have any, you know, uh, comments, positive or negative, um, you know, just keep it um, fifth grade level and I will respond to those as I get a chance. And I uh, hope to get some more videos up soon. Have a great day. Thank you very much.